Good morning. Today we're going to be reading Puss in Boots. Long ago, there was a poor boy named Jack. Jack's parents had died, and all they left him was a cat. What am I going to do? Jack said aloud to himself. I have no food, no home, and no friends. Ahem, said the cat. You have a friend. Me. But you're a cat, said Jack. A very amazing cat, said the cat. If you make me some boots, you will see that I can help you. Jack made the boots, and the cat pulled them on. Thank you, purred the cat. He rubbed his head against Jack's hand. You're welcome, cat, said Jack. Call me Puss in Boots, said the cat. I have a plan to help you. Wait here. Puss in Boots ran into the woods. He stopped at a small stream. Aha, thought Puss in Boots. This is a perfect place to lay my trap. Soon, a curious bunny stuck up its nose into the trap. Whoosh! As quick as a cat, Puss in Boots tied up the bunny in his bag. Puss in Boots trotted through the woods until he came to the king's castle. He banged on the door. Open up, he cried. I have a present for the king's dinner. And I pr a present from my liege lord, the Marquis de Calabash. Push in boots, ran back to Jack. I told the king about you, said the cat. Hurry, now you must go swimming. What does the king care about me, asked Jack. And why am I going swimming? Because you are going to marry the king's daughter, said Puss in boots. Jack did not understand, but he did like to swim. He took off his clothes and jumped into the river. Puss in boots hid Jack's clothes in the bushes and waited. Soon, the king and his daughter came down the road in their coach. Help, he yelled. The Marquise de Calabash is drowning. The king stopped and helped Jack out of the water. Jack hid in the bushes. Thieves stole his clothes, Puss in Boots explained. The king gave Jack some clothes. Let us take you to, our, to your home, said the princess. I don't have a home, Jack whispered to Puss in Boots. Just follow the road, said the cat. I will go ahead to prepare. Puss in Boots ran down the road until he came to some farmers. If anyone asks who owns this field, he said to the farmers, say it belongs to the Marquise de Calabash. If you do, I shall reward you greatly. Jack the princess and the king soon reached the field. Who owns this field? asked the king. The Marquis de Calabash, said the farmer, and his very amazing cat. Puss in Boots ran ahead into a castle. He knocked on the door until an ogre answered. Yum, said the ogre. Now I can have cat for lunch. Wait, said Puss in Boots. I have heard that you can turn yourself into any animal you choose. Is this true? See for yourself, said the ogre. The ogre roared. Suddenly, he was a leaping lion. The cat sprang into a high window. You are big, Puss in Boots told the ogre. It must be easy for you to, to turn into something big. But can you turn into something small? Hmm. The ogre laughed. Of course I can, he said. The ogre shrank until he became a tiny mouse. Puss in Boots jumped down from the window and caught the mouse. He popped it into his mouth. Just then, the king knocked on the castle door. Welcome to the home of the Marquise de Calabash, said the Puss in Boots. This is a very nice castle, said the king. Yes, said the cat. It would be even nicer if the Marquise could share it with a wife, maybe a princess. Your cat talks a lot, said the princess. Yes, he's a very amazing cat, said Jack, and he's right. I would like a wife. 
Hmm, said the princess. I want to find out if the amazing cat has an amazing owner. The princess soon decided that she liked Jack very much, and they were married. Puss in Boots spent the rest of his days living comfortab comfortably with him in the castle, and everyone agreed that he was a very amazing cat. The